guys, this is Cindy with Easy Seat Productions. Welcome to my channel. And this is January 22nd, 2018 with our daily updates. So I'm going to head out right now to the site. Um, before I do, I do want to thank everybody for coming by and for subscribing to my channel. I do have a geologist on board who um, helps me um, mock out um, all the data that we're seeing and collecting. Um, again, this is just based on our observation from ground view. Um, and uh, really appreciate you guys coming by. All right, so um, before I go, I do want to mention that um, the slide is still moving. Um, reports that it's moving 1.7 feet per, per week, um, but no new news, which is good news, right? Okay, so um, I do want to talk a bit, a bit about the weather. Um, people were asking what our weather looks like. Um, so for this week, we do have about three or four days more of rain. Um, and we have been having freezing temperatures. We have had gotten cloudy skies and today's a sunny, sunny day, but it's about 50 degrees. All right, so um, I also want to include that my geologist is going to put a clip and this is probably to um, answer questions and uh, go in deeper and provide more information into what we're seeing. All right, um, one last thing I do wanna mention is that I am in the process of getting information. I'm waiting for a call back from Department of Transportation. I have asked um, what the plan would be when I-82 closes, um, if it closes, if it gets to that point and they close I-82. The reason I ask is because we um, have so much traffic coming through um, and we, our freeway goes all the way down to the valley. Um, so I think it'd be a good idea to have that information. Um, I heard certain exits will be closed, but I'd like to get accurate information. Okay, so thanks for coming by. And this is Cindy with Easy C Productions and I'm my geologist. All right, and I do want to mention I'm always buckled, guys. Thanks for your concerns. All right, so here we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna record and take pictures out here. I really appreciate the comments that are coming through, guys, and everybody that's subscribed. We really appreciate you guys coming by. And um, feel free to share, and we appreciate the comments, questions, and we'll try to answer, as, answer them as best as we can. Good day everyone. I wanted to take a moment to address an article that has was submitted to me last night. Uh, this is a reprint from the Seattle Times and published by the Yakima Herald last night, I believe. Um, and I wanted to go through some of the comments that were made in here that I think maybe just lead to m more confusion rather than getting us any closer to sound answers into when this slide will actually occur um, I don't it, it's tough to say but um, I just wanted to go through some of those things briefly if I could um, 
and, and in short, they're, they go on, but what are the chances they'll be right? And is it even possible to predict when an 1,800-foot tall ridge will come tumbling down? Um, I think this is the first thing that we need to address. Um, this ridge is not 1,800 feet tall. It may be elevation 1,800, um, but it is not 1,800 feet tall. Um, the Yakima Valley Emergency Management Office released this in lieu of drone use. And you can clearly see that we're talking somewhere in the neighborhood at its peak, somewhere around 700 to 400 is obviously the line, <coughs> excuse me, that the FAA is requiring for drone use that they stay below that line. Um, so let's, let's be clear about this. And um, because I've seen this 1800 foot used quite often, um, believe me, you don't want it to be 1800 feet. Um, but back to the article, I think let's, you know, get past that. And yes, great, accurate statement here. Yes, there is a lot riding on those answers. Um, again, we've talked quite a bit to, to great length of how much rock we're actually um, talking about here. Um, this particular author wants to use, in this case, 8 million tons. Okay, let's whip out the calculator here. Um, if we take 8 million tons and divide that by 1.4, which is the conversion factor to convert into cubic yards, we come up with roughly about 6. Let's just keep that in mind going forward. I mean, I'm not particularly interested in nailing this down, but I think some consistency in this might be in order so that people know what we're what we're talking about here what what's actually going on so hold that kind of almost six million cubic yards in your head for the moment and we'll get back to this later um, as we go down um, they go into a discussion about what instrumentation is being used um, and as it says here, the landslide forecasts are costless, hedging with warnings that collapse could come earlier, but the approach being used has a solid track record, hmm. particularly in the mining, mining industry. It is based on blanketing a hillside with instruments to measure the rate of slip, then extrapolating the trend. Um, and it goes on to say that this is a blunt instrument, but it's t tested and it's worked on slides before, said University of Washington GMR files David Montgomery who has chimed in ever so often with generalized statements regarding this landslide. Um, and my point of confusion here is in the next paragraph where one of the, one of the method's biggest successes came on April 10th, 2013, when the operators of the Kennecott's Bingham Canyon Mine near Salt Lake City hustled their crews out of the pit in the morning and announced the slide was imminent. That much is true. Um, however, um, when we go to the NASA site, um, who did a little detailed um, observation of this, again, um, this, this mine is quite a bit, much, much bigger than what we're dealing with here, and it is an open pit mine, so I think there's other variables here as far as landslides go that we're not going to consider in this one, but was considered in this one. Anyway, without getting too long-winded about this um, and as NASA reported regarding the results of this uh, the monitoring this slide while the size of the slides was unexpected the timing was not the company that operates the mine had installed interferometric radar system months before the event that made it possible to detect subtle changes in the stability of the pits walls um, I don't think that we have interferometric um, instrumentation on this particular landslide and I'll leave it to you to you know you could wiki this all you want it is it's certainly very technical um, but it's certainly very um, accurate um, certainly in terms of dis um, determining very subtle changes um, w there was a case study that I had read about this um, we can leave this in the links you can go over again it's very technically based um, but I think from the introduction section only, 
that you could get a general idea of what this type of instrumentation entails and I would be I'd be all for it um, if in fact this is happening I will leave it to the press to report on this and report on the results I think that would be um, I do believe this particular method from what I've read briefly um, I do believe that we have we do have the means to n n not necessarily nail this down I don't think we'll ever nail it down but um, I think we could do better than what we're doing um, because as it said if just to backtrack a little bit um, and interferometric methods do not necessarily blanket the hillside with instruments yes however um, we are blanketed with instruments no question about it um, in short um, these little triangles are you know, basically prism survey prisms if you will um, any surveyors out there will know what I'm talking about um, the G GPS monitoring sites all well and good that's good stuff um, but I, I tend to think there is, I, I think their confusion is coming from the overall, I you know, wouldn't say unreliable, but there is a margin of error with this kind of thing. Um, and I think that's kind of where we're getting into the confusion. Um, as you can see here, the LiDAR scanning, which I believe is ongoing, should be very enlightening. Um, I hope to see it. But yes, we are, it's very much peppered with instrumentation. Um, unfortunately, um, no fault of anybody's, I'm sure, but the uh, seismo seismometers are, are thin, um, and I will probably expand on this, on this particular data in another section. Um, I didn't really want to go into it today because it's not really what we're talking about. Um, you know, um, I think, um, you know, as we, as we go further, there is quite a bit of an opinion that this method does in fact work uh, sorry about that um, and I hope it does um, but the people go um, other geologists or chi university geologists are chiming in with um, con confirmation if you will perhaps that this will work I hope it does um, you know but we'll we shall see um, this was put in, updated today, and this was put in a pretty nice graphic of, again, just a general idea of um, what's going on. But as reported, again, this is from the Washington State DNR, Department of Natural Resources, who have pretty much stood by um, this number of 4 million cubic yards. So I think that's what we're going to stick with for now. However, when we go back to the 8-ton model, and we take our convergent factor again and take 4 million cubic yards multiply that by 1.4 I can kind of see where the confusion came from because we almost come up as you can see with the same number that we came up in the other other conversion factor however there's quite a disparity between 5 tons and 8 tons so I would just urge the media to try to be as accurate as possible as this for the people that live there so they do understand what's going on here um, and again is um, the University of Utah engineering geologist Jeffrey Moore pointed out um, there's enough case histories behind this method that when the data look right I don't know, a little grammar issue but and you're able to identify trends, you can actually predict the time of failure more said. That's, I would like to see uh, the media actually produce these case histories because um, I've yet to see anything like that published. So um, that would be a wonderful, uh, a wonderful thing to see. Um, regarding the slide itself, I just want to touch on that very briefly, but... Um, I, again, David Montgomery has made another statement down here about this that it, as far as the rate um, the geologic foot is coming off the gas, um, we're, to an extent that is true, but we do have to keep into account that yes, if as pressure builds up, and we did show this before, that um, as pressure builds up as we go back to this wonderful graphic that was produced by um, 
the Seattle Times, published by the Seattle Times, I should say, that, yes, when this resisting forces, and we're getting them on all sides, and you can see the bulging here, you can see bulging there, you can see the twisting there, yes, as the pressure builds up, it's going to slow down. But that doesn't mean that the pressure has stopped. So I think it's a little confusing and when you say that it's the foot's off the gas. Um, you know, the geologic foot is coming off the gas, whatever that means. Um, I'm not really even sure what that means. But it was just, again, I think this just adds to the confusion of what's really occurring here. Um, and we go on to... You know, other geologists that backtrack and this method is not foolproof and okay, you know, which we, I think we understood. Um, and I think we could essentially leave it at that. But, um, you know, I want to, you know, I just wanted to emphasize the point that uh, an article like this will, I think, simply add to the confusion. And yes, it does make, and I urge all of you that live in the area to take a look at the 2014 Oslo landslide where in fact 43 people were killed um, I kind of wish that we would have had better methods of detecting than that so than what appears to be now because we just seem to have so much confusion um, but anyway I don't see other than I you know, don't see anything else you know, other than the obvious that, you know, there's less concern that it's going to go west more than south. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. We just don't really, um, we don't really, obviously, we just don't have a grasp on this. And, and this, this type of journalism, um, you know, doesn't, doesn't help us get closer to those answers. Um, this is an interesting point towards the end, but um, Wiley and Norris Engineers, um, pretty reputable group there or I do believe they are the ones responsible for the LIDAR images that we will uh, hopefully eventually see and I'm looking forward to that but they're a pretty good outfit and I'm glad to see them on board with this but um, other than that um, I just wanted to point some of these things out so as you're reading you know question what you're reading question um, you know if it's not making sense to you well then it's probably not making sense so anyway, we just wanted to point that out. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, we will obviously keep our eye on this, and we will talk to you all very soon. Thank you.